Hey everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part one of chapter six of Higurashi When They Cry. Let's hope I get the pronunciation right on this. Tsumi Horoboshi. Hopefully that's close. Uh, anyway, so as you guys know, I absolutely loved the last chapter and a lot of you said it was your favorite chapter, one of your favorite chapters, but I also got a lot of comments about this one being a lot of people's favorites and saying that, you know, this one is as good, if not better than the last one. So those are some strong words. So we'll see if you guys are right about that. So this one seems to focus on Rena, and Rena has been kind of put on the back burner for a bit. We haven't really delved into her character very much. So, I mean, I'm excited to learn more about Rena. Of course, there's a lot of mystery still to be solved about her. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and let's start the craziness and let's see what happens in this one. Okay, so we're at the dump. Definitely a Rena chapter. The first fall, a tournament chapter. How is your reasoning towards the truth coming along? The next tragedy is ready for you. Enjoy! This is a humorous story with a tragic struggle at the end. The difficulty is zero. You can just enjoy the clouds milling about. Okay, well, so it seems like it's going to be a pretty light-hearted chapter with the devastation at the ends. How is that any different from any of the other chapters? Okay, let's do it. The first time I would try harder to avoid the inevitable tragedy. The second time I would be disgusted with the inevitable tragedy. The third time my disgust would turn into anguish. The seventh time I'd be laughing by then. Okay, interesting. Don't know who is that Rena's point of view? Whose point of view is that coming from? Anyway, the course of the Higurashi had replaced that of the cicadas. Their cries came from a distance, echoed loudly and then faded away. They sounded so weak and fragile. Rena's voice was just like the cries of the Higurashi. She'd say something, but the words would quickly fade away. She sounded so fragile that it made me worry she might vanish into thin air along with her words. But nobody is pressuring her to continue. Mion dusted off the hood of an abandoned car and sat down on it as if to show how relaxed she was. <laughs> Weird hearing Mion when we know it's Shion, but I'm totally cool with just calling her Mion. She actually did look very relaxed, as if she came here to enjoy the cool breeze of the evening or something. Sadako followed Mion's example and sat down as well. She didn't look nearly as relaxed, however. I thought about following suit, but it felt rude to look away from Rena even for the short time it would take to look for a place to sit down, so I decided to remain standing. Reika-chan didn't sit down either, but she wasn't looking at Rena. Everybody else was looking at Rena, but Rika-chan was looking at the red sky. Rika-chan's expression was hard to describe. She looked pale and blank at the same time, as if all of her emotions were gone. Rena wore the same kind of expression. She kept trying to say something, but it seemed like the words were stuck in her throat. She noticed Rika-chan was looking at the sky, so she decided to look that way as well. Mion did the same. So did I. Alright, we're back in Keiichi's, uh, place again. It's good to have him back. Sadako looked that way, too. And with that, there was silence. It was like we were in a concert hall, filled with the chorus of the Higurashi. A concert hall with the highest roof in the world. A refreshingly cool breeze tickled our sweaty bodies. I could almost make myself believe we came here to enjoy the breeze and the sunset. I could only wish that was what we came here for. The shadows of the birds flying across the sky soured the feeling of our quiet concert. They reminded us that time hadn't stopped. Nobody wanted to pressure Rena. We didn't want time to pressure her either. We wanted to keep the cool red sky as long as we could, so Rena could calm down and talk. Right then, I heard a sound and it brought us all back to reality. The hood Mion was sitting on had made us noise when she moved to cross her legs. I don't know whether Mion made the noise on purpose or not but it reminded us that time had been passing by. The noise took our attention away from the sky and back to the ground. Such a tasteless noise seemed to have urged Rena to speak. Rena heaved a small sigh, nodded as if she understood something, and looked at us like she always did. There we go. Just wanted to fix the uh, the opacity of the text box there so that the bottom half isn't cut off. She was probably saying it to everybody, but since I'm standing in the middle with her looking at me, I nodded to her to represent her agreement. Rena, 
Her voice wasn't hoarse anymore. She sounded just like she always did. Now they're talking about it starting off lighthearted, but it seems like something pretty serious happened right off the hop. It sounded like a question, but nobody answered. だから友情のためには何でもしようって考え方、そういうのって素敵だと思う。だって世の中が綺麗事で縛られてて、やっていい努力がわずかだけに決められていたら、幸せじゃない人たちはますます幸せを勝ち取れなくなっちゃうじ
All my classmates were joining in, so it's gonna be a big water gun battle. I'm so excited. I guess we're not Renai just yet. If we're ever gonna be her at all. みんなは楽しいですが、僕たちは例によって負けられないのです。ま、そういうことだな。およそ勝負となろつく以上、俺たち部活メンバーは常にリスクを背負ってるから。まあ、そういうこと。部活メンバー諸君は部活に負けたり
そこまで言われると悔しいよねっていうか悔しいどころじゃねえぞプライドの問題だぞくさ兄ちゃんの言うように負け癖ってやっぱりあるかもしれないよねだから今日は絶対に勝ってみんなを見返してやろう Rena's eyes look different. She's usually a funny and weird person, but I know she has the determination to do what she needs to. When Rena looks like this, she can be a tough opponent. Rena smiled. Or maybe you could have called it a wicked grin. She was serious. She was serious about what she said. I could tell that from her expression alone. Among all the club members, Rena is easily the most sensible one. The rule of our club is we can do anything in order to win, but she's the only one who has moral qualms in doing it. That's why we rarely have a hard time against her, except for when she snaps. Oh, <laughs>、uh, is that foreshadowing right now? It's rare to hear her say she won't go easy. We pounded our fists together. Usually, when we really don't want to lose the game, one asks the other to work together, but Rena didn't ask this time. Which meant. That she was going to try and defeat everybody by herself. No, not try. She was going to do it by herself. Rena looked really cool at that moment, but I wasn't scared. If she was seriously going to do it, I'd have to be serious and do it too. My fighting spirit had been dented after so many losses, but it had begun to burn hot once more. Keiichi kun mo なかなかいい顔してるね怖いな全員と一人で戦っても勝てるつもりでいる顔だねレナだってそのつもりだろうじゃあぶつかるのは最後だね互いにクラス全員を全滅させたら最後にはそうなるな最後の戦いの時そこにいるのがケイチ君なのを期待してるねおう We pounded our fist together again 光線規定はちゃんと覚えてるね被弾時の申請だけは正直にね被弾した人は撃っちゃダメだよ仮に当てても向こうねミオン被弾の定義を再確認したいぜ水鉄砲で撃たれたら被弾<笑>ひねくれたケイちゃんのためにさらに補足するなら水鉄砲というこの容器から出た水がさつまり水鉄砲を経由した水をバケツに溜めてぶっかけても無効ってわけ直接攻撃以外は有効じゃないってことだねさとこちゃんの脅威が少し薄らいだかなあはははトラップにもいろいろございましたよレナさんなんか一番最初に餌食にして差し上げましたよ<笑>それは無理私を仕留めようとしたらさとこちゃんじゃまだまだ役不足だねな、なんですってほほほレナが売り言葉とはねこりゃ面白くなりそうだよ<笑>ねっケイちゃん大して面白くねえと思うぞ俺かレナかどっちにやられたいかを選ばされるだけなんだからなケイチもやる気満々なのですミオン seemed to sense the fighting spirit in me and Rena I could tell she's as serious as we are just from the way she looks well that's just ミオン like that's just her level like she's just always at that level よっしゃいい面構えだよ気に入ったじゃあ始めるよ全員参加くじで決められた場所に移動してね Everybody had to draw lots to pick a place to start the game from. It wouldn't be fun if everybody was close together at the beginning of the game. By the way, my starting position was behind the school building. 
When I drew the starting position, I thought about hiding until there were only a few people left like I did in our last game of tag. But a defensive tactic like that wasn't interesting to me anymore. I hadn't been this excited in a long time. My legs were shaking with excitement. It was my first time experiencing that kind of feeling. I could hear Mion's countdown from some distance away. A single shot of a toy pistol echoed. Oh, this is some new music. With that sound, I was already running around the building. There had to be some underclassmen nearby. I'd usually assume that somebody else would take care of them, but this time was different. Or maybe it's not new? I don't know, it sounds kind of familiar. They stood frozen in fear as I ran towards them screaming at the top of my voice. They took a moment to quickly decide whether to fight or run away, and in that moment, I shot one after another. I felt bad for them because they lost the game so quickly, so I rubbed their heads to cheer them up, and then took their water guns. Yes, that was the key factor in this game. Oh, is he just gonna, like, take everybody's gun? Are you allowed to have multiple guns? Maybe that's Sadako's trap, is she's gonna have water guns set up everywhere. You can't put very much water in a water gun. With ten people around you in a gun battle, the water would be gone in a minute. I abandoned the gun I used to shoot them, held one of their guns in each hand, and scoped out the schoolyard. Okay, so I guess you can have multiple guns. Just like I expected, there was an intense ba uh, an intense battle happening there. In the short time it took me to take care of the area behind the school building, it seems like most of my classmates were already shot. I wasn't surprised though. I kind of knew it would happen. You need to have a high skill to fight in the open schoolyard. Especially when most of the club members were there. It must have been like a battle of elephants and ants. Mio was holding a different water gun from the one she had when the game started. She was now holding one that looked like a huge machine gun. Well, she does import a lot of games and stuff, so and her family runs toy shops, so who says she didn't get, like, the most powerful one available? Its range capability, its pump-action shooting, and the amount of water it can hold were way beyond comparison. There was no restrictions on what kind of water gun we could use today. As long as it's a water gun, we were allowed to, we were allowed to use any kind. Most of us had a normal pistol-style water gun from a local toy store or something similar. I would have brought a bigger one, uh, like Mion's, if they'd had one. But they weren't in stock, and I'd have to order it in. In other words, Mion ordered hers a long time ago, just for today. She's always well-prepared when it comes to winning. She must have thought we wouldn't allow her to use the big water gun if she showed it off before the game started, so she must have hidden it somewhere. It looks like most of our classmates were shot right after the game started. Only a few were still alive, trying to survive as long as they could by using the heavy construction equipment as a shield. Mio mercilessly shot at them from various angles to make them come out from behind the shield. <laughs> Tomatsukun and Okumurokun were trying their best to resist her attack from behind their shield. It looked like they had no chance against her, but that actually wasn't true. After all, the two of them were only still alive, because of all their experience in water gun battles. They survived the first few minutes of her assault, even though 99% of their classmates didn't, and they were still surviving at that very moment. Mion, however, is also a battle-hardened <laughs> battle soldier. She used the advantage of her big water tank and gradually, but certainly, drove them into a corner. It was only a matter of time until she broke them down. <laughs> they tried to hold out against her, but all they could do for now was to keep running behind cover as Mion strafed closer and closer to them. They wanted to use their two against one advantage, but it seemed like they wouldn't even get that chance. If they tried attacking recklessly, one of them might get shot, and then the other would have no chance of winning. So they grew more cautious, placing their bets on their final chance, but that caused their offense to wane. Oh, I like this. Of course, Mion saw through, uh, saw through that plan. She was purposely provoking them so they'd lose their patience and start attacking her recklessly. Mion circled around the construction equipment, and now she was standing with her back towards me. 
If I went up against her machine gun fair and square, I wouldn't stand a chance. So attacking from behind would be the only way for me to defeat her. Even though she was in a defenseless position, there was still some distance between us. I was still too far away. But it would still be better to attack her now than to take her head on. He's probably going to walk into one of Sadako's traps or something. Don't hesitate, Keiichi. You won't have this chance again. I stepped out from my hiding place and ran as fast as I could towards her with two water guns in my hands. Instead of approaching slowly and silently, I screamed at the top of my lungs. Is that really what you want to be doing, my dude? Or maybe have her turn around and then the two of them can hit her while she's distracted? Mion seemed a little shocked by my surprise attack. What surprise attack? You announced yourself. But she immediately pulled herself together. She knew the advantages of her weapon. But she didn't shoot me just yet. She held back, luring me closer. Mion was well aware of how much water she had left. She had the same kind of water gun as me. We would have had the same range capability. So it would have been down to our technique to decide the winner. She was fighting against one of her underclassmen. She could have defeated them easily. Mion immediately calculated her chance of winning against me and figured out that her only chance was to use advantage of her water gun. She saw the eye of the tiger in me and recalculated her chance of winning in a split second. Really, I can admire how fast she does these things. I ran at top speed to shorten the distance between us. Our strength should have been equal. I had two water guns with full tanks and she had a machine gun with a half-empty tank. We both waited for the perfect moment. This is when I want to see like a um, I, I want to see a CG thing of like them like running at each other with the water guns just looking really cool. The moment we step within range, Mion and I pulled our triggers at the same time. Mion set her sights squarely on me while I was trying to shoot and run at the same time. Her shot would obviously be more accurate than mine. My shot of water flew towards nowhere. Mion didn't even need to duck. But Mion's shot made a beautiful arc straight towards my chest. I could see the line of water coming straight at me, but I was too unstable to dodge. Mion had no doubt that she got me. I love how they have time to have these conversations while I'm assuming the water is still coming at him. <laughs> You're really disappointing me today, Mion. You could have figured it out if you'd spent just one more second to think. You could have figured out the reason why I didn't creep up on you, but screamed as loud as I could instead. Was it uh, for Rena? Mio noticed my surprise attack and turned around to face me. Oh, yep, 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 that's what I said. Not Rena, but with uh, Tomatakun and Okumurokun. Mio noticed my surprise attack and turned around to face me. In other words, she turned her back on the opponents she was fighting earlier. Those opponents heard my scream and saw she had her she had turned her back on them. <laughs> Mio noticed her back was wet and cold. She finally understood the underclassmen she was attacking just earlier had shown their fangs and attacked her from behind. I blocked her water shot with my arm. Right before it hit my chest. The line of water was broken into droplets and splattered away. So, so, so you, have to get chi you have to get hit on the shirt specifically, I guess. If you get hit on the arms or legs, you're good? Or your face? Oh, okay. Mion squatted down and covered her head. Now it was me versus Tomatakun and Okumurokun. Their reflexes weren't so bad. They knew well that I'd be their next target after Mion was gone. 
They didn't feel sorry at all for attacking me right after I just saved them from their predicament. I can respect the cruelty and how quickly they shifted gears. They may one day be able to join our club if they keep refining their sense of skill. This is when I'm expecting Renna to jump out of nowhere and get them. They were, however, one step behind me. It was already too late. For them, Mion was their first target, and I was next. But I was different. My first target was them from the start. I didn't even see Mion as my target to begin with, because I knew that they would take care of her. I was pointing my guns at them long before they moved their sights from Mion to me. Aw, oh, man, I was hoping Renna would come in for a sneak attack. It seemed like they noticed at the last moment that both my guns had been pointing at them from the beginning. Which meant it was already too late for them. <laughs> I jumped over Mion, rolled on the ground, and landed on my feet. I looked as elegant as an athlete who had just finished a perfect performance. I had a gun in each of my hands. And with those guns, I shot them each in the middle of their chest. <laughs> Tomita-kun and Akumuro-kun fell to their knees in disappointment. Mion wiped the dirt off her knees, looking frustrated. I twirled my guns on the tip of my fingers. There were only a few people left alive. I was, all the time he was having that monologue, somebody definitely could have shot him. I was expecting maybe Rena could have gone up and just hit him while he was having that whole cool spiel. Rena, Sadako, and myself. Oh, I guess Rika is already down. Rena and Sadako were fighting fiercely. Were they evenly matched? No, Sadako was pushing her hard. Moving fast, she was driving Rena into a corner. Rena was usually gentle and slow. But today, she was different. She was very serious today, and yet... Sadako was still overwhelming her. She's a tough customer, even without her tricky traps. Sadako kept moving around, piling on pressure in order to pin Rena down. She kept shooting, so her tank must have been almost empty, but her, shar uh, her shots were still sharp and fast. I noticed a bucket near her feet, which was full of many water guns. I understood seeing that. She had been taking guns from others who were already out of the game. In this battle, reloading bullets, water, was more crucial than the actual shooting. The hole that you put water into in these guns is rather small. To put water through it from a faucet takes time and requires a certain amount of skill. In a battle like this, it would be almost suicidal. I understand that well, so I'd been taking guns from the people I defeated, but I could still only hold one in each hand. Sadako used a bucket to overcome the limit. Rena looked like she only had one water gun. I assumed she had two earlier, but she must have used a lot of water during her long battle with Sadako. It looked like she was trying to save her water for the right moment. But with Sadako's fierce attacks, it was obvious it was only a matter of time before Rena was driven into a corner. However, Rena's also quite skilled. She only pretended to be driven in a corner, but she was actually luring Sadako to a place where she'd have the advantage. There was a narrow, twisting path near the gymnasium warehouse behind the school building. With Rena's water levels running low, she'd want to turn things around with a single close-range shot. That narrow path was a perfect place for her to do that. あれあれ、攻撃の手が鈍ってきたね。疲れてきた。あははは。お気遣い嬉しいですけど、まだまだでしてよ。それより<笑> 
体操服を濡らした気の毒だからね。期待を打ってあげるね。<笑>まさかレナさんとこんなにもスリリングなやりとりができるなんて思いませんでしたわ。でも、最後の一発分の水量では、大して勢いもないでしょうから、射程もほとんどないんじゃありませんサルコは正確だ。レナは少しずつ水を作ることができる。As the amount of water left in the tank dwindles, the range of shots you can make shortens. That makes the last shot the shortest and weakest of them all. Regardless of her absolutely disadvantageous situation, Rena didn't look frustrated. I could tell she had no intention to lose. It was almost like she didn't even see Sadako as a threat. <laughs> Sadako seemed to understand how dangerous Rena's last shot was going to be better than I did, since she was the one actually fighting against her. Sadako took out another gun with a full tank and shortened the distance between them slowly and carefully. A gun with a full tank doesn't only have a long range, it also has enough power to make shots more accurate. If they shot at each other in a frontal attack, Sadako would have a 99% chance to win. Even so, Sadako was still afraid of Rena's last shot. Sadako shortened the distance even further, smiling as if unafraid, but I could tell she was actually full of fear. Sadako compared the situation to chess earlier, but it wasn't exactly the same. In chess, you can use some pieces to drive the opponent's king into a corner, but in this case, there was only Rena and Sadako. You can lose some of your pieces in order to achieve a win. But Sadako doesn't have any pieces other than herself. A king can't drive the other king into a corner alone. That's called a stalemate. That's why, while at first glance it looks like Sadako has the absolute advantage, they're actually on equal footing. That's strange, I thought. Rena would have, uh, wouldn't have had to move just on a dare from Sadako. What kind of plan did she have? Rena had been hiding behind cover for a while, but she came out without hesitation. Did she have a gun hiding behind there or something? I noticed something right away. Rena had a different gun, yeah! Sadako seemed to notice it as well. Damn, she's good. In using a trap at the last moment for a come from behind victory, is, it was as though she was taking Sadako's best skill from her and firing it right back. Sadako no longer had any advantages now that both of them were pointing their guns at each other with full tanks. But she still looked confident. What? I'm still like, where the hell did Rika go? Is she already out? I'm expecting maybe Rika's gonna come at the last second and just take everybody down. What was going on? Did she have some kind of plan too? So no Oh, at that moment, lightning ran through my brain, and I instantly understood the situation. Of course. Rena was in a, in a disadvantageous situation earlier, but it was actually the same for Sadako, since she didn't have a chance to make her shot while Rena was in hiding. Rena had remained cautious in order to hit with her last shot, and that made it difficult for Sadako to attack her. However, what if Rena didn't need to take the last shot for a comfort behind victory? No, I said it wrong. What if Rena got a new gun with a full tank? She'd stop hiding and come out to fight against Sadako. <laughs> Did she, like, did she mess with the gun or something? Let Sadako talk crap, Rena. You don't have to listen to her. Just shoot her right now. Rena thought the same thing. That's the thing, it's like, I love how they're having the time to have these conversations about their tactics. She shot at Sadako without any hesitation. Oh, but she frowned in confusion a moment after. Oh, she did. She, like, maybe drained the... The, uh, what's it called? The tank, or she messed with it somehow. What was going on? She couldn't shoot? Was her water gun broken? Or did somebody break it? Oh, 
私が切り札をここに一丁持ってることを先に読んで細工したってわけだね私いつも言ってましたよトラップは最後の最後でほんの一つささやかにこれが究極の美徳でございましたよ When it comes to traps, Sadako remained a notch above Rena after all. I couldn't believe Sadako figured out Rena's plan in advance and set a trap to counter it. Rena, you made a big mistake. You should have kept the old gun with you. You could have at least made that last shot. But it's too late now for you to pick it up again. Rena was in a worse situation than she was before. She couldn't even take another shot. <laughs> Sadako slowly narrowed her distance again and pointed the muzzle at Rena's forehead. Rena still didn't look like she'd given up. She still thought the game was undecided. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is what I want. I wanted the la. I wanted exactly like they said. I wanted a showdown between Rena and Keichi. トラップで相手を仕留めたならね、さとこちゃんが余裕を見せるのは勝者の権利だと思う。だけどね、今のさとこちゃんは私を絡め取っただけで仕留めたわけじゃない。余裕を見せるのはまだまだ早い段階だと
Neither of us neglected to make any effort possible to take advantage of the situation. Yeah, that's what I. <laughs> yeah, this is what I want. I want the CG of them running with the thing. That's awesome. We circled around the construction equipment, trying to take shots at each other. We were both sweating like crazy, but I didn't feel tired. Big drops of sweat tickled as they ran down my body. Rapid bursts of water flew across both of our paths. Neither of us had the advantage or disadvantage. I didn't feel elated that I might win, or frustrated that I might lose. I was just enjoying this battle with Rena. It was like a dance. A dance that I couldn't dance alone. A dance that I could only dance with an opponent. There's Rika. <laughs> In fact, none of the observers could tell who was going to win. Neither could we. We had no idea who was going to win. We had no idea when this battle would end. I didn't know why, but it was great fun just to fight against Rena, and I didn't even care whether I won or lost. In fact, I never wanted it to end. As we fired at each other, both of our tanks emptied, shortening our range. Inevitably, it became more and more like a melee than a gun battle. We fired our water guns as if trying to cut each other with blades of water, swinging the gun like a sword. We both came up with the idea to swing the gun hard to generate centrifuge, centrif centrifugal force in order to increase the range of our attacks. I dived to duck her shot. I rolled on the ground and landed on my feet. I ducked her shot again and swung my gun like a sword. Who could have imagined our club's water gun battle would turn into a one-on-one -on -one close combat like this? Absolutely nobody. <laughs> We're both breathing hard, calculating the timing needed to take a closer shot. And then we both grinned wickedly at each other. <笑>負けても恨まないでね。ああ、恨まない。この勝負を終わらせた自分の不甲斐なさを恨んでやるぜ。だがそいつを恨むのはどうやらレナの方になりそうだな。どうかな。ケイチ君、足が藁だよ。I became relaxed enough to enjoy the battle, and finally realized that many of our classmates were watching our one-on-one -on -one fight. I barely had any water left. I would have to make the next shot count, or I was done for. It seemed like Rena was in the same situation, too. ないても笑っても次で終わりだな。水が有限なのが惜しいぜ。鍵にがあるから美しい。花も一緒だよ。なるほどな。そういう見方もあるか。本当に楽しかった。でもこれで終わりだね。だな。無水かもしれんが。
どっちが先にわかんない全然見えなかった Our classmates broke the silence first. They finally realized that our intensely beautiful one on one battle was over. Angel. Hunter. Mion in turn realized she had to deliver a verdict to end the game. But she was just as stunned as the others and took her a moment to recover. Mion was taking time to render her verdict. In fact, Ren and I didn't know who won either. My last shot flew fast and splashed sideways as if a blade had cut her chest. I knew that for sure. But at the same moment, Rena's shot hit me in the shoulder. Whoever shot the other first wins. But we didn't need, uh, but we didn't know if it was me or her. That's why we stood motionless, waiting for the verdict to be delivered. Mio's not gonna let it be a tie, is she? There's no ties in this game. Everybody held their breath, waiting for Mion to call it. Ren and I kept staring at each other. The spectators were the only ones who were interested in who the winner was. To us, it wasn't that important. We had a great battle. We had both really wanted to do better than the other. We both wanted to call it a tie. For this great battle, settling for a tie would be the best and most proper option. In other words, this one on one fight wasn't a battle to decide the winner. It seems like everybody is thinking the same way. Me? Hmm. Uh, mm. Mion hates to settle for a tie because she loves to draw the line between superiors and inferiors. That's what I was thinking. I was like, Mion's not going to let any game settle for a tie. She tends to settle for a tie when deciding who the loser is because it's more fun to have as many people as possible suffer the punishment, but she's never settled for a tie between winners before. Mion holds a special feeling towards the meaning of being number one. Everybody continued holding their breath, awaiting her verdict. Please make it a tie. Everybody wished for that in their hearts. Mion was hesitating to make the decision. She could have chosen a winner more easily if even one of us did a little bit better than the other. But even if one of us did a little better than the other, I feel like nothing fits better than settling for a tie. Mio finally started speaking. Mio あたしは二人の最高の戦いぶりに評価を惜しめない。ちょ、ちょ、結局はどうなるんですの？階速の精神から一位を二人に認定するのはこのましくない。でも二人には僅かの優劣もなく、どちらを膠着させるかの判断も
ギク<笑>かっこつけときながら保身第一ってあたりがミオンっぽいうんあ逃げたぞ<笑>ず、ズボシかよわかりやすいやつだな The bell rang, a sign that class was over, while we all laughed at Mion. After that, <laughs> Rika chan held out a towel, a big smile on her face. However, Ren and I stepped back and pointed our water guns at her. <laughs> もう撃たれてると言っても誰も信じてくれないのですよ。リカちゃんは、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、そこに、ダンボール箱の中でミーミー泣いて誰も拾ってくれないかわいそかわいそな猫さんなのですよミーミーブーム The sound came from Rena's head I saw a circle of smoke coming out of it Rena must have pictured Rika chan meowing like a cat in a cardboard box Aw,、oh, ugh. Ouch. Meet, meet. <laughs> Boom. Rena, you're ruining how cool we looked earlier. Rena was back to her normal self and jumped on Rika chan like a chameleon capturing its prey. Rika chan struggled to get away. Hi, Minasa! Hayaku k y o s t u ni modori nasai! Chie sensei clapped her hands and yelled at us from the window of the teacher's office. Iko ze, Mina! Everyone exchanged smiles and ran back to the classroom. Yeah, that was fun. That was, it was nice having the club activity again. I missed those. I didn't realize how much I missed them until we actually have one. That was a really good one. One reason I like my house is because it has good ventilation. As long as there's a nice breeze, I don't have to rely on a fan to keep me cool. I can take down my futon from the windowsill, place my cushion near the open window, and enjoy the cool breeze of the evening. According to my page a day calendar, it's June 1983 today. While it was still June, it seemed like summer skipped the rainy season and was already coming around the corner. This was very abnormal, apparently. Even if it was abnormal weather that only comes around once in a hundred years, if it was supposed to come in June of 1983, then it wasn't so much of a big deal. It was inevitable. On the other hand, the sudden evening shower on the way home from school was more unpredictable than anything else. Every day had been in perfect harmony, as if it was all carefully planned. I felt like something good was going to happen this year. How should I put it? It's like the feeling I get when I roll a six on the first throw of a board game and start off with a huge lead. When it comes to a die, the more you roll it, the more the total averages out. We actually roll a die many times every day of our lives. So it's not like one stroke of luck is really a big deal to be overly happy with. If I roll a six on my first throw and a one on the next,、uh, next throw, the total is seven. If you believe in fate, you might say there's a higher possibility of one to come up on that die. But you can never actually tell which number you'll roll. That's what fate is all about. You might roll a six again. The chance of rolling a six twice in a row is one out of 36. But if you look at each throw one by one, there's only a one six chance of that miracle. The glass wind chime Sadako put up today was making a refreshing sound. Okay, so it's、uh, Rika. I wasn't sure. I'm like, is this Rena? Is this Keichi? I was thinking maybe Rika because there was all the talk about like, the weather. Like, she was kind of weird about the weather when it was that chapter about her. I awoke from my dream, still feeling excited. I must have had a very happy dream. I already forgot what it was about. 
It felt as if there was a switch that automatically made me forget my dreams when I opened my eyes. All I could remember is that it was a happy dream. I look at the ceiling and enjoyed the happy feeling for a while. Yeah, enjoy them while you can, Keiichi. It was Sunday today. Outside the window, I could hear morning bird songs that sounded totally different from what I heard on weekends. The morning bird song on weekdays sounded like they're in a rush, as if they're telling me to hurry to school. But on Sunday, it's different. I could tell the birds are singing simply because they want to tell everybody how great a morning it is. I even felt like the birds that sing on weekdays must be different birds from the ones that sing on Sunday. I wonder if there really are birds that only sing on Sunday. It sounds like a very luxurious job for some reason. It's a waste to let it's a waste to listen to such a valuable bird song when you're not quite awake. As I fully awaken, my normal, crude personality takes over, and I start feeling stupid to even think there might be birds that sing only on Sunday. <sighs> As I yawned and stretched, my blood started circulating through my entire body. It felt good. I turn over and look at the clock, which says it's past 10 a.m. I used to go to my cram school on Sunday at 10 a.m. That was before I moved to Hinemizawa. My parents made me go to several cram schools back then. I remember that the one I had to go to on the first and third Sundays of the month were the hardest ones of all, because I had to change trains several times to get there. I was never allowed to sleep in so late back then. My mom always woke me up early, so I didn't miss my classes. God, what a, what a friggin' nightmare of school that would be as you, you have to go to school, I'm guessing Monday through Saturday in Japan, and then Sunday you do gra cram school, so you have like no breaks at all. That's probably why I always dreamed of being able to wake up whenever I wanted to on Sunday. Needless to say, I don't feel that way anymore that now that I moved to Hinemizawa. After all, I can always sleep until noon on Sunday now. My life has changed completely since I moved here. Before, I used to think living in the countryside would be really inconvenient. To be honest, I wasn't even interested in living here. But it was only the first few days that I felt that way. Now, I don't feel attached to life in the city or its conveniences. When I think about what part of my life in Hinemizawa I'm the most attached to, I'd have to say, it's probably my friends. I guess the reason why I'm being so sentimental is probably because I had so much fun yesterday in the water gun fight with all my classmates. Despite my age, I got so into it, and I had so much fun. Hell, I want to do that now. That sounds fun to me, and I'm way older than he is. I bet the kids in the city wouldn't be able to play like that. No, I should say they wouldn't even want to in the first place. They wouldn't even realize how exciting a simple water gun fight could be. I went downstairs and saw my parents watching a serious TV program, arguing about the topic together. The experts on TV were arguing about the same thing. It seems like there's a possibility the telephone service will get privatized. I'm too young to understand how privatization can make things better. But I can easily assume people will start talking about, the, about privatizing the postal services in the near future, too. My parents were arguing about the topic fiercely, but they got along very well. Let's put it this way. They get along well, and that's why they argue. I don't remember seeing them get along this well when we were living in the city. This is probably one of the things that got better since we moved to Hinemizawa. A cold relationship between parents doesn't bring any benefits any benefits to their kids. あら、ゲイチ。日曜にしては早いわね。朝ごはん食べる?今日はいらない。あと、今日は外で食べるから。昼飯もいらないや。なんだ?友達と一緒か。ゲイチがよく話す部活というやつかいや、今日は部活じ
I like to think Rena would be the type of person where if Keiichi was like, can you keep that to yourself, she would. Now, Mion and Sadako, another story. <laughs> Rena and my parents looked at me and laughed. I said good morning and they laughed. I guess I was too late, or he's got his shirt on inside out or something. My parents must have already told Rena some embarrassing secrets about me. I don't want my parents to tell her anything else, so I put on my shoes in a rush and pushed Rena out the door. My parents waved at us, smiling. I dragged Rena away from the house, and we were on our way. We rode our bicycles to the town of Okinomiya. It's a long way away. It's an easy ride to the town because it's mostly downhill. But needless to say, it's a hard ride on the way back. It felt like Rena was giggling whenever she looked at me. I badly wanted to know what kind of embarrassing information my parents had fed her before I came downstairs. I tried to give her a new subject to talk about in order to get whatever she heard from my parents out of her mind. レナって何気にうちの親と仲いいよな。うん、仲いいよ。よくお話しするもん。よくお話してあ、確かにお袋は特売日とか豆にチェックしてるな。冷蔵庫のとこに磁石でいろいろとメモが貼ってあってさ。どこそこで何がいつ安いなんてのが書いてあるのを見かけるよ。それでね、今夜は何にし
その過剰な反応が雄弁に答えを物語ってるぞ。ケイチ、calm down, God, sounds like he's trying to get it, like, get on with his her, her mom or something like, come on, ケイチ。<笑> no mention about the dad, just the mom. I want to meet your mom. とにかく、レナのおばさんに興味が出た。<笑> I'm really interested in your mother now, calm down, dude. 今度ご挨拶に伺うからな。覚悟してやがれ。普段、お宅のお嬢さんに大変お世話になっております。いや、お嬢さんと真剣なお付き合いをさせてもらっているものです。くらいの方が面白いかもしれないな。はあ、もしうちに来たら、みーちゃんたちにケイチ君のちっちゃい頃の話をしちゃおうかな。かな。ちっちゃい頃とは。具体的にはいくつの頃のエピソードだえっとレナがおばさまに聞いたのは4つの時の話と6つの時の滑り台の話とあとあとすみませんでしたレナさんレナさんの目の黒いうちは竜宮家の半径 100m には絶対近寄らないようにす<笑>ありがとう Yeah she's definitely hiding something Damn it mom I'll remember this We arrived at the station. The place we were going today is right near there. It's a restaurant called Angel Moor, of course. We were meeting up with the others there. I was surprised when I saw the restaurant. It's usually a normal and quiet restaurant, but today there were many people in front of it. They didn't look like they were waiting in line to get inside, it looked more like they were just loiter loitering around. They should just line up and go inside like normal people. <laughs> すっげえ人だな今日はイベントデーだからねこの日のためにすっごい遠くから来てる人たちも大勢いるんだって Oh, is this that dessert, all you can eat dessert thing? There's a flag, yep, saying dessert festa in front of the restaurant I heard that Angel Mar holds events like this several times a year and a lot of people come to attend from all over 今日のデザートフェスタはね抽選にあたってチケットがもらえた人しか入店できないのでね1枚のチケットで4人まで入場できることになっててねなるほどなチケット持ってる友人が来るのをこうして店の前で待ってるわけかうんちょっと違うかなチケットの人にはねたまに4人未満で来る人もいるのなつまりなんだ落選者たちがチケット当選者のおこぼれに預かろうとこうして群がってるってわけなのか At that time, the crowds of people roared in excitement. What was going on? こ,こいつチケット持っているでござるよチケットは4人まで入れるのに1人で入ろうなんておこがましいにゃりん残り3人の枠にぜひ加えてくださいにゃぼ、僕を仲間に加えてくれたらエンジェルモートトレカのレアカードを申請するよおいらならフロントフィールドの夏コメ新刊を限定本付きで日暮らしベータ版<笑>世界モード総裁版で譲って<笑>ジーシーの魔改造フィギュアでなんとかおお俺はこのお米券でどうだこんな愚か者よくわからん騒ぎになっとるぞ<笑>このお店のコアなファンはちょっと怖いからねところで俺たちのチケットってのはどうなってるんだ第一俺たちメンバーって5人組だろチケットの定員じゃほらこのお店みーちゃんの親類のお店だからねっニオンって時々すげえよな。レナ makes a fist and gets all fired up。じゃあ、行こう。一気に駆け抜けるからね。それが最良の策みたいだな。よし。We nodded at each other. Since we were a group of two at present, it looked like we had two more seats to share. These people might try mobbing us in order to get a share. We crouched down, getting ready to run. A crowd of people seemed to notice us. あの二人強行突破を試みるつもりなりんしかも女子と二人きりでボックスシートを埋めようとは不届き千番一
所に座ってラブラブな空気を打ち砕いてやるでござる最後の一発まで抵抗しろゲルマンの鉄の意志を見せてやるのだ Damn, they are going to tackle us. They do whatever it took to stop us from getting inside the restaurant. Oh my gosh, wait. Okay, so I'm guessing it's the punishment that they all have to dress up in the, uh, in, like, be the waitresses. I'm like, okay. Me on whatever, but it's like Sonico and Rika have to be included in that. They're so little. <laughs> that doesn't feel right. Dakara, me on touch no bats game or me to do care no a kenji de ari. Give them a harmon, ne? To kako yoko kimeta to kore de. Stagokora mardashi nanda keto na. Satoko chan ya Rika chan. Oh my god. Oh, I was right. Komo chikari. <laughs> Young couple me. Otonash could skip to Sashidas de Gosario. Coco at Osarese. Angel Moto no event to skip to Taritaka de Shoka Shiona to a Yurusenyarin. Amata Wakin, what an old quire de Gosario. They reached their hands towards us like zombies. They gradually got closer and closer. We were actually taking it easy, though. In fact, I'd say the situation was rather enjoyable. Ah,なんだか昨日の部活がまだ続いてるみたいだね。ああ、なんだか面白くなってきたぜ。練習を蹴散らして一気に行くぜ。うん、了解。ミーちゃんやサトコちゃんを相手に回すよりは簡単かな